Hi, and welcome to this edition of the Insurance Experts. It's my pleasure to have on the line John Guinan. John is a long-term care insurance specialist, and he's going to share his knowledge with us today. Thanks for joining us. Well, Mark, thanks for allowing me to be here. Okay, so I know you have an interesting backstory. Uh, tell me again, how did you get into the industry, long-term care insurance? Well, long-term care insurance for me, Mark, is actually a second career. Um, I got into it about 10 years ago. Most of my career has been in computer software sales. Um, you know, at first blush, kind of unrelated. Um, I'd retired from that about 10 years ago, thinking that maybe I'd retire forever. And um, a friend of mine who was in the long-term care insurance business said, you know, we can use some folks in this industry to educate on the importance of planning for long-term care because the country's population is getting older. Mm -hmm. So having gone through a care episode of my own family with my mom, it dawned to me, well, maybe this is an area in which I could make a contribution. Yeah, it sounds like you have a story similar to a lot of people we talk to. It oftentimes starts with a personal experience yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about your mom's situation and, and what happened to her? Sure. My mom, at a time in her life when she was a, wid was a widow um, and in, along in life, at an advanced age, had a stroke. And um, the, the, the stroke left her really, for lack of a better word, debilitated. Mm -hmm. And um, as is often the case in families, when a parent has a care episode, mm -hmm. the bulk of the care is provided by daughters. Uh, my, my mom had eight kids, six of whom were boys. Um, and, and most of the boys lived very close to where my mom lived at the time that she had her stroke. But as is often the case, boys are not very helpful in providing help with a care need. I've had people tell me just simply not in their DNA. Mm -hmm. My mom at the time was living in Pennsylvania. My sister at the time was living in Los Angeles. And my sister quit her job in California and moved to Pennsylvania to take care of my mom and help her through her need. And that really drove home for our family the consequences of what a long-term care episode can do. Because even though this has been 10 years or 11 years ago, in many respects, my sister's life hasn't even now fully recovered. Mm -hmm. um, she, she gave up a very good uh, paying job for one now that isn't nearly as good paying. Uh, really derailed her career advancement. Um, and, 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 and this is something I've come to learn since is, is an often told story that right. a long-term care episode can have devastating effects on a person's family. Right. And I would say that's probably the number one reason that people seek out a plan is to create a situation where their kids don't have to necessarily take care of them. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this theme today, um, that your health you know, buys you coverage. You mentioned your mom had this stroke. And obviously, once you have a health event like that, it becomes very limiting your options that you have. But I know you had a client recently uh, that came to you and was interested in long-term care and had a health issue. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure, absolutely, Mark. You know, one of the things we're finding is that particularly in recent years, this coverage has become very difficult to obtain from a health standpoint. Mm -hmm. My own theory for this is that we as people in the country are getting older. I don't think anyone would dispute that. And it's my belief that as the country's population is aging, insurance companies are becoming more selective with respect to what they consider to be appropriate helps. Mm -hmm. So my 11 years and in, in, in my 11 years in this industry, I've never seen it harder than it is right now to get this coverage from a health standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I counsel people to look at this while your health will still permit it, because if something were to happen to you from a health standpoint that would be disqualifying, you couldn't get it from that point on at any price. Mm -hmm. In any event, one of the nice things about the company that I represent is we are one of the largest agencies in the field. So we represent many of the top carriers, and I'm able to present to my clients a, a variety of, of options, if you will. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman I met with about three years ago who at the time was 65 years of age, who from birth has had cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And her financial advisor had told her because of the cerebral palsy, she didn't think that 
she would be eligible for coverage. And um, the woman came to my attention, my knowledge, through my wife, with whom they're, uh, they're our friends, or they're, they're friends. And my wife suggested, well, let John give it a go. What have you got to lose? And um, very, very luckily, I was able to, to find her coverage. Um, right. She's, uh, as she, in my humble opinion, should be very, very appreciative because particularly for a woman who isn't married as, as, as she isn't, um, you know, a care need could really disorient a person's whole life. Right. Um, you yeah. have options. Yeah, so, now I'll kind of ask you a little bit more about this uh, case that you worked with. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you're shopping the market for a number of different options. How many insurance companies at that time do you think would have approved her for cerebral palsy? Uh, well, you, even, even then, of the 11 or so I represented, 10 would not have taken her. So I yeah. was able to find her with one. So it's great that you're and, a specialist in this because you can kind of find that needle in the haystack option for people. But it's a good right. thing to make people realize that the sooner you plan, the more options you have available. You know, if you're if you're planning while you're healthier, like you said, and you're more proactive about it, you may have 11 options. Uh, if you wait, that just kind of limits your options. It doesn't mean that you can't find something, so it's never too late to plan. But the earlier mm -hmm. you do so, you just keep everything on the table. No, that's actually right, Mark. And that's actually the bigger lesson here, in my humble opinion. I'll be candid and say I'm not sure even now the one company that I found for her years ago would accept her application. Again, because insurance companies are becoming more uh, strict. Um, but I think it is incumbent upon people to investigate this while their health is relatively good. Um, right. I think it's a truism that our health does not get better as we age. Right. Um, I, I can tell you in my own life, uh, I've seen that to be true, that with yeah. every passing year, you're not getting healthier. Right. So I can tell people, look at this now, because you'll never be better positioned than you are right now to, oh. to be eligible for it. Well, I appreciate you joining us today on the Insurance Experts. We hope to have you in future episodes. Thanks so much. Well, thanks for letting me be here. I very, very much appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Yep.